Let's briefly look at today's scriptures before we jump into Mass. Today's first reading comes to us from the book of Genesis. It's a fascinating story which we heard from our Babylonian captors. Do you remember the story? How it was that we were deported from our homeland? We were deported from our homeland and taken to a, a land called Babylon. We called that period the Babylonian exile. And when we were in Babylon, we heard a story called the Epic of Gilgamesh. Have you heard this? If you studied world literature, maybe a sophomore, you may have studied the Epic of Gilgamesh. What is the Epic of Gilgamesh about? It's about a hero named Gilgamesh, but there are other heroes in the story. And one of those heroes is Upnapishtim. And Upnapishtim was famous in that story for building a boat because the God of Wisdom talked about how it was that everyone would be destroyed in a flood. So the God of Wisdom, Ea, tells the hero, build the boat. He builds a boat. He's in the boat during a flood. The boat lands on a mountain. They send out a bird to make sure that it's okay to come out. And then when they come out, they offer sacrifices to their gods. Does that story sound familiar? Today's first reading was our version of the Epic of Gilgamesh. How fascinating. And we heard the story from our Babylonian captors, and we brought that story to make it our own. Forty days in the ark. Forty is a symbolic number of completion. And at the end, what did we see in the sky? We saw a rainbow. How fascinating that this story gives us an etiological explanation of where the rainbow came from. Where did the rainbow come from? If a child asked, Mommy, Daddy, where does the rainbow come from? Mommy or Daddy had a story to explain where the rainbow came from in an age before modern science. So we have this story of the rainbow appearing. According to the story, what was the rainbow a symbol of? God's covenant that God would never again destroy the entire earth. Today's second reading comes to us from the first letter of Peter. We've said before that the first letter of Peter is a pseudonymous letter, which means what in English? That Peter really didn't write it. It was written in his name and in his spirit and in his authority. Someone wrote the letter in his name, but it wasn't written by Peter. It was written about 90 AD to some Gentiles in Asia Minor, modern day Turkey. And what does it talk about? It's talking about, you see that in line six, it talks about Noah and the ark. You see that? First letter of Peter is talking about Noah and the ark. Why? Because in the same way that Noah was saved in the midst of all these waters, we are saved through the waters of baptism. Think about that for a moment. Medieval churches in England used to make their baptismal fonts. You know, in many churches we use a bowl or a baptismal font. They used to make them in the shape of an ark. Why? Because in the same way that the ark saved Noah, baptism saves us. The waters of baptisms, the waters of baptism save us. And so that's today's second reading. First letter of Peter talking about baptism and likening it to Noah's ark and Noah being saved. And then today's gospel. Today's gospel is fascinating. This year we're focusing on the gospel of Mark. We know that the Catholic Church spends three years taking a look at the gospels. The, the year of Matthew, the year of Mark, and the year of Luke. Which year are we in now? This year we're in the year of Mark. The second year, or the year B we call it. And Mark tells us that after Jesus was baptized, what immediately happened after he was baptized? He was driven out into the desert by the Holy Spirit. Oh, great. Right? What good fortune is that? You're baptized, and what's the first thing that happens? The Spirit thrusts you into the desert. For how long was he in the desert? Forty days. According to the story, did he eat a lot during those 40 days? Did he visit McDonald's every one of those 40 days? No. What happened during those 40 days? He fasted and prayed. Why is, why is this experience significant? Because in the second line it tells us that what happened in the desert, he was tempted by whom? Satan. We'll come back to that in today's homily.